This inexpensive lens for the ZV-E10 gives you a background blur that is 500% or five times more blurry than what you can get with the kit lens. This lens essentially turns your ZV-E10 into a camera that is capable of capturing professional quality portrait photography or incredible cinematic video. And this actually makes a lot of sense when you think that the sensor that is in the ZV-E10 that actually captures the photographs or captures the video is the exact same sensor that is in Sony's A6600, which is a high level enthusiast or entry level professional camera. So the hardware in the ZV-E10 is absolutely capable of capturing professional quality photo and video. It really is just the lens that lets this setup down. And even before you take your first photo with this lens, the first thing you notice about it is the lens itself is honestly built like a work of art. It is absolutely beautiful. It's an all metal lens. It's a metal lens mount. It's got a metal lens cap. It's just an absolutely stunning design. And when I took this thing out of the box, if somebody said that this lens was made by uh, Rolls Royce or Zeiss or one of the top sort of well-known quality manufacturers of any given product in the world, I would have just said, yeah, that's what it feels like. And once you take the lens cap off, you're gonna notice this just massive and beautiful front element. I mean, this is just an enormous piece of glass in this thing. And that's really the thing that stood out at me when I first took it out of the box was how big that front element was. Now, the most outstanding technical specification of this lens is the fact that it can capture an aperture or it has an aperture of f0.95. Now, we compare that to the kit lens at 50 millimeters, the maximum aperture of the kit lens at 50 millimeters is f5.6. And what that aperture does is it determines how blurry your background is and how much light gets into the sensor. So it helps determine how good the quality of low light photo and low light video is going to be. So really the aperture gives the camera the ability to get a blurry background and get better photos or video in low light. And just to show you on the lenses themselves how different that is, I'll take the lens off and you will just be able to see the size of that aperture. Now, if you look through there, you can see how big that opening is. That is an F0.95 opening, and it's absolutely massive. Now, let's just have a look at the kit lens, and I've got the kit lens set at F5.6, and look at how small that opening is. Look at the difference. So that is F0.95, and that is f5.6. And essentially, the bigger that opening is, as I said, the more blurry the background's going to be, and the better the camera or photos or videos are gonna turn out when you're in low light situations, because it means there's more light getting to the sensor. So it's a great low light lens, it's a great portrait lens, it's a great lens for anything that you want to be able to isolate that subject and have a blurry background so that the focal point or the centerpiece or the thing that you're photographing or videoing is just jumping off the canvas or jumping off the photo or jumping out of that video footage. So it really draws the viewer's eye to that subject that you are trying to highlight in your photo. And it just doesn't have to be portraits of people. It can be portraits of objects or it can be portraits of dogs or anything where you want that sort of subject isolated. And as you'll be able to see from the photos that I've been playing in this video, it is a stunningly high quality lens. It is an extremely sharp lens in the center, particularly from f1.4 down. It is just a stunning lens. It also gives just a little bit of a cinematic feel. It's not a super high contrast clinical lens. There is a little bit of character there, and it just gives the photos and videos that you capture with this lens a little bit a point of difference, a little bit of that something extra and something special. It's a type of lens that you could use and feel like you don't have to do a lot of editing. You don't have to apply filters to get the best out of it. It just really creates a very sort of dreamy and creamy image straight out of camera. The other thing that is absolutely critical about this lens to me is the quality of the background blur. And what you'll find is when you are taking a photo or when you're taking a video and you've got your subject sharp and in focus and you have got a blurry background, it is absolutely critical that that blurry background is sort of creamy and dreamy and beautiful. Because when you capture these images, 
most of the image is actually out of focus. So why people love to obsess about how sharp a lens is, and I do think that's important as well, most of the image is out of focus, which means you're actually going to notice more the quality of the out of focus areas than you are the in focus areas. The other thing that's critical about this lens, and it's something that's true about just about every lens that you can find that goes to a 0.95 aperture. The lens is not at its very sharpest at 0.95. That means that the subject you're focusing on or the person in the center of frame is going to be sharper if you're using this lens at f1.4 compared to f0.95. Now, some people will think that that makes the f0.95 less usable. But what you have to understand is when people are evaluating the image sharpness, the average person that's looking at it, not the pixel peeper that's just blowing up and sort of zooming into someone's eye. The average viewer, when they're looking at an image and determining how high quality and how, high sh how sharp it is, they are actually comparing how clear and detailed the thing that is in focus is compared to the background blur. So even though at 0.95, the images aren't their sharpest, the in-focus areas aren't at their very sharpest, because that background is so much more blurry, it still actually has a greater impact than shooting at say f1.4 or f2, where you are getting a little bit more sharpness, you are getting a little bit more detail, but you are getting a less blurry background. So this lens is beautiful and perfectly usable at f0.95. And as I said, importantly, those out of focus areas are just creamy and dreamy and smooth. So if this is an inexpensive lens, it goes to f0.95 and can take these amazing professional quality photos and it's inexpensive, what's the catch? Well, there are a few things and this lens isn't necessarily for everyone. And the first one is the close up image quality isn't great. And this is not uncommon with portrait lenses or lenses that have a basically a humongous maximum aperture. Essentially what it means is that if you are trying to get a blurry background on a subject that is very close to the lens, that item close to the lens is going to have kind of a ghostly, creamy, not detailed uh, image quality. You can solve that by stopping the lens down to sort of f1.4 and f2, and if you do want to use it close up, you can use it at those apertures, but you are not going to be able to use it close up and get good results with f0.95. The other thing, as I said, is it is not always the sharpest at f0.95, and if you are a pixel peeper and you want to zoom in and you want that ultimate detail and critical sharpness in the center of frame when you're taking your portraits, you will probably have to stop it down to f1.2, f1.4. Now, even if you're that person who thinks of this lens that way and are obsessed with that image sharpness and you feel like oh, I'm probably gonna use it at f1.4, this is still an excellent f1.4 lens with kind of a bonus mode that takes you to f1.1, 1.2, all the way to f0.95. So even if you are somebody who is super critical about sharpness, you can shoot this at f1.4, you are going to get good critical sharpness. But in addition to that, you are going to have somewhat of a bonus mode going all the way up to f0.95. In addition to that, you are going to struggle to find a high quality f1.4 lens at this price anyways. And in the description down below, I put a link to the best price that I've been able to find on this lens so far. So if you're wondering about the current price, just go down there and check the link in the description down below. The other thing you should know about this lens is there is a very modest amount of barrel distortion and because of the type of lens it is, that is not corrected in camera. With a lot of the Sony lenses or native mounts for the Sony ZV-E1 that is automatically going to be corrected in camera, because this lens doesn't pass that information along to the camera, it's something that isn't corrected. Now, as I said, it is very, very modest. You're only really going to notice if you're doing sort of buildings or things where there's really straight lines. You're not going to notice in landscape or portraits of people people or dogs or, or anything where they're soft, sort of not straight line surfaces. So I don't think it's a concern, but I thought I would mention it. And if it's a problem for you, it is very easily corrected in editing if that's something that you want to do. And the single biggest problem I expect people to have with this lens is the fact that it is a manual aperture, manual focus lens. Now. I don't want you to be afraid. The photos that you've seen on screen throughout this video, at least 50% of them were taken by my 15 year old daughter. She had never used the lens before and she was nailing focus or at least getting a reasonably high hit rate in a very, very quick period of time. So 
It isn't actually that hard, even though I know a lot of people are afraid of it because they've always used autofocus. And when it comes to the aperture, the aperture is quite simple. Normally when you're taking photos, you don't change the aperture very much anyway. So you're just gonna de determine what aperture you wanna use, f0.95, f1.4, that's pretty much where I took all the photos. You just set it to that and forget it, and you let the camera do the rest. In addition to that, the, the ZV-E10 does have some tools to help you nail focus. And after using it for about a day, I basically tuned it in. So what I was doing as I was telling the camera that the function that I was gonna use to nail focus was a double tap on the back of the screen. You can set that up in the menus. So you're sort of looking at the back of the screen. You see the subject that you want to focus on and get critical focus on. You double tap. It brings that up enlarged. Then you nail your focus and then you take your photo. And with mine, what I found is I got so good at nailing that critical focus in the end that I basically set that double tap preview to two seconds. So what I would do is I would double tap the back of the screen. It would zoom in. It would give me two seconds to focus. I would get the focus close or good enough. It would then give me the full frame again and I would take the picture. And I was finding with that, even at F0.9, I was probably getting at least a 50 or 60% hit rate on really nailing critical focus focus. And if I thought I wanted a little bit more room to breathe, I would stop it down to F1.4. Uh, and in that case, I was even getting a better hit rate. And I must admit my 15 year old daughter who probably has a little bit better eyes than I do, she was getting a higher hit rate than I was with getting that critical focus in the photos that she was taking. And if you love the idea of turning your ZV-E10 into a professional portrait camera or a cinematic video camera, but you're scared to death of the manual focus, I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is a lens that will get you a very similar result, but it is an autofocus lens.